It's 10 years since these skies lost their innocence. So much has changed. The walls of security in Lower Manhattan this morning, for example. The terror alerts, including the latest one just in time for this anniversary. All part of the new normal. But remember how it all started and where you were on that perfect late summer's day. Who doesn't? World Trade Center, a plane has crashed into the upper floors of one of the twin towers. Oh my goodness. Oh God. There's another one. Now it's obvious, I think, we have a terrorist act of proportions that we cannot begin to imagine at this juncture. And many of the emergency workers basically just happy to be alive. That was then. This is now. America does anniversaries well. It values the healing power of rituals and memorials. The square fountains inscribed with the names of the dead. They reflect the footprints of each fallen tower. But this may be the last time that the world is watching and that presidents attend. Bush and Obama, the latter swept to power because he rejected the politics of the former. But 9-11 has tied these two men together. Yes, it was President Obama who captured and killed Osama bin Laden. But from Guantanamo Bay to Afghanistan, he's also inherited the unfinished business of his predecessor. And yet today was not going to be polluted by politics. Mr. Obama read a psalm from the Bible. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. President Bush chose an extract from a letter penned by Abraham Lincoln. President Lincoln not only understood the heartbreak of his country, he also understood the cost of sacrifice and reached out to console those in sorrow. Notice the cheers from the audience. But like every other memorial ceremony, this one is first and foremost about the individual names that live on in memory, stone, and voice. Joseph Amatuccio. Paul W. Ambrose. And my dad, Michael Batch. You are forever in our hearts. Rest in peace. Uh, you know, it's all still very surreal. Above Ground Zero, we met Jonathan Egan. His British father died at his desk on the 105th floor of Tower 2. He managed to make one last phone call to his family something for which they are pitifully grateful. I would have been crawling around in there looking for my father for God knows how long if I hadn't had that peace of mind. And uh, I'm very fortunate to where I... Did know, they find his body? They did not. They did not. They, they, you know, it, three years later, my, my aunt's remains were found. My aunt was visiting my father that day. A father and an aunt lost in one morning. Just one of the thousands of heartbreaking and unforgettable stories that haunt America at this time of year. You can sing this the images of 9-11 and its aftermath are firmly filed into the memory bank of America. But history is still making up its mind. The story, as it were, is still unfolding. And what America remembers today are not only the lives lost, but the spirit of solidarity and sacrifice that rose from the ashes of ground zero and then vanished. <laughs>